Hello, good people. It's Rob Lee. I'd like to talk to you today about a subject that is shunned today, and the subject is race and racism. And they're words that are really new, quite frankly. Uh, it's not a word that really has been talked about in the past. You know, race and racism are relatively new, and they're a dirty word now when referring to certain people and acceptable if you're only talking about how bad white people are and that we are responsible for all the woes of the world and it has to be repeated non-stop that white people are to blame for every problem that every other race has had i humbly ask you a question and i ask you to look at this picture and we've talked about this before here we have two young white women which one is an Israelite? Which one is of God? They're both nice, they're soft-spoken, they're friendly and easy to like. However, which one of, of these ladies is of God? And which one is truly related to the people called Jacob Israel? What does one have that the other does not have? And just how important is all this as we walk in these end times among people that hate us and or who we are stay with me good people we're going to go to the middle of the ocean deep today we're going to offend some people but we're also going to educate some people and we're going to let our father and jesus christ do this white nations have seen their ways of life removed and replaced right before their eyes white people have become the enemy in their own nations white people are made to feel ashamed of who they are they hear it non-stop you cannot get away from it, whether it be the internet, television, movie, medias, music, academia, it is everywhere. Every person is told to be proud of their race, culture, and heritage except white people. The history of white people is erased from the books and replaced with a false history. If you wanted to destroy a people, you would start with the children. This enables control of future generations. When a small child walks into a preschool today, they are indoctrinated with diversity. Some of the first things they see are multicultural pictures, exhibits. Then they will see what's called a ball earth, a globe, as in globale. Glow is light, bale is a name of, of, of the devil, light of the devil. Then they will see such lies as dinosaurs. Dinosaurs never existed. They will see pictures of space, a fictitious space, because it's a lie. And then they will learn that white people are bad. They will learn that LGBTQ575, whatever, is good. They will learn that Jesus Christ is a lie. As they get older, they will learn there's many gods and there's this God. And they will learn lies when they are little. When they go home, when they go home, their ignorant and godless parents smile and go along and they continue to hammer the point home. You see, it's not only the television, music, and the internet and schools, the ignorant godless parents hammer this point home go along to get along what is god's truth doesn't matter what god's truth is it's the world's truth remember the almighty father said that if you love the world you are the enemy of god you have enmity with god think about that god says if you love the world you got hatred with me you're my enemy that's what these people are they're the enemy of god the New Age movement has sought to destroy the woman. Why the woman? Because to, to, to destroy a people, to, to corrupt them, you start with the children. But if you want to eradicate a race, you start with the woman. You see, this is why the devil came to Eve and not Adam in the Garden of Eden. The serpent approached the woman. The woman reproduces the children of the future. Now, using a massive propaganda campaign, the enemy has reduced many young women to lives of shame and ruin for the way they look, talk, walk, and the very clothes they have on their back. They work 24-7 demoralizing and annihilating the self-esteem 
and confidence of white people, especially young white women who are made to feel like if they don't go along, they will not fit in. You see, this starts when they're very young. You know, I want to tell you a story real quick, if, if you will indulge me. That happened to me about a year ago on BitChute. Now, you all know I don't like the uh, Hitler people and some of these people that are called Christian identity. I want to tell you a story that happened to me. I did a video about a 15-year-old girl in Wisconsin who was murdered by her black boyfriend. The reason I did the story was because her friends went to the school and said, look, we want to do a tribute. Her name was Kaylee. We want to do a tribute to Kaylee at one of the halftime football games. The school board said, no, if you do a tribute to her, you have to do it to her boyfriend, too. Now, her boyfriend's the one that killed her, but yet they did it because he was black, you see. And this is this type that we're in now. We, they, you had to glorify the killer as well as the victim. But that's not what happened in the, in the story. What happened in the story is when I, when I did the video, uh, this was back when some of these Nazi people, before I, had the, before I let them know what they are to me, which is Pop-Tarts. They're soft, right in the middle. You can just break them in half. Pop, soft. They started talking about this white girl's a whore. She's no good. She's a race traitor. She's bad. And I remember thinking, and folks, I don't believe in interracial marriage. I don't believe in interracial sex. Uh, I don't. I'm against it because my father has taught me better. I don't like even seeing it. It's not for me, man. But I remember thinking as these boys were talking about this young 15-year-old girl here you had people that are a billion miles away from Jehovah Father, a billion miles away from Jesus Christ, telling this white girl that she's condemned as if butter don't melt in their perverted, nasty, filthy mouths. Because let me tell you something about white women. You know, white men dog white women as much as other races do. But let me tell you something. White men are always talking about how white woman's a whore, white woman's a whore. Let me tell you something. I know the truth about most white men. You take these Hitler people, some of these Trump people, these identity people, you put them in a room with a black woman, a brown woman, you put them in a room with a snake, they'll sleep with it. And then they'll point at the white woman and tell you how bad she is. Man, you guys ain't fooling nobody. You're not fooling anybody. But I could not get over the hypocrisy of condemning this young white girl, 15 years old. She made a mistake. She's dead. And these people were to dog her, just dog you. She's a, she's a race traitor. She's a whore. She's no good. As if somehow these people are special. Man, listen, before you can start condemning somebody, you got to be God. Last I checked, ain't none of us God, especially especially you long-winded Hitler people. I don't like you people, man, at all. At all. But let me say this about these Hitler people. I don't like the KKK. The reason I don't like the Klan is because I don't believe if you have a problem with a black man or a brown man or anybody else, you should put on a sheet and hide. If you got a problem with a man, you tell him, I got a problem with you. I don't have to play dress up. I don't have to dress up and drag and burn crosses and pretend that I'm a man of God when I'm not. Be a man of God, work in the light, walk in the light, and tell another man, look, I got a problem with you. I don't think most people understand, man, that some of these white, cult, white movements and white groups, they're not of God, man. They're not of God. Do you think God would ever tell a, a white, strong Israelite man that if you got a problem with another man, I want you to put a hood on and hide like a coward? Man, you do it in the open, and you do it in, in the presence of the Father and Jesus Christ and anybody that's watching. You don't put on no damn sheet. However, if we're allowed to have an ADL, a Jewish Defense League, a BLM, a La, a, a La Raza, if we're allowed to have all these groups, then even the KKK and the Hitler people and all the rest, they should be allowed to have their groups too. You see, that's true fairness. But let me get back to where we're going here. I understand what white people have been through. You see, a lot of these white people gravitate toward Hitler and Trump. This is why you had so many white people gravitate toward Trump because they lost their jobs. 
Do you know how many tens of millions of jobs went overseas to middle America, went from middle America to Central America, went from middle America, the Northeast to the South, the manufacturing and textiles and car companies that went, went to Asia. Man, in the past 20 years, white people have lost a lot. They're paying twice for food, twice for houses, twice for cars. They lost apartments, businesses, insurance, and more. White folks have seen a lot of things change in, in their life, man. But let me ask you something. When you see all this hate toward white people, who do you see at the forefront? What color is their skin? It's white. Sure, there are many races and cultures that are anti-white, but the head of the beast, the head of the anti-white beast is white. It's not black, man. It's not brown. It's white. And only the liars and the BSers will say that it's not. But who are these people and what are they called? And why do they hate me and you so much for being white? What is it about us that they hate so much? Is there something deeper there? Well, there is something deeper. They're far deeper, man. You know, if you want to conquer a people, you have to do it from within. You got to do it from the shadows. You try to either look like the people that you're trying to conquer or you use their own people to conquer them. You see, a white man will plot another white man's demise as he, as he pretends to be his friend and puts his hand on his shoulder and calls him, you're my racial brother. You see, in the eyes of God, there's no such thing. There's no such thing as your racial brother. Because you're either with Jesus Christ or you are not. Jesus Christ says, if you, it, you, you are either with him or you are not. I'm going to read the verse to you in just a little bit. We are surrounded right now by parents, grandparents, 70, 80 year old folks, our children, teachers, cops, doctors, nurses, neighbors, friends, media whores, social workers, actors, athletes, and a slew of internet demons that will say and do anything to be a part of the new age agenda. Anything that goes against God, they're for it. They're for it. And at the head of this beast is a group that wants to allow itself and keep itself immune from criticism and then create laws to quiet people and cause mass censorship. Then they want to turn around and say, we're God's chosen. Would anybody that is of God do that? Nobody calls them out because most folks are simply godless them damn selves. That's the epitome of evil and cowardice. And cowardice, yet this is exactly where we are in our society today. These are the people who say we're God's chosen. You're not God's chosen. You are imposters. You may have white skin, but you're not, you're not on the inside. You're lacking something. You know, when Cain was banished from the Garden of Eden, where did he go? And most of you know the story. The father comes down and he banishes Cain. He's killed his brother, and he tells him. Cain starts complaining. They're going to kill me. They're going to find me. They're going to kill me, which kind of lets a lot of people know who study the scriptures know that there was other people here. But where did God banish Cain from? He sent him east. Well, if he went east, he would have had to have went into Asia, India, and the far Middle East. Now, the worship, worship of the dragon... And in many parts of these regions became prominent, the dragon being the serpent, a.k.a. the devil. In fact, throughout history, if you believe some of the reports, there have been sites with white skulls and features in China, India, and the far Middle East. If Adam and Eve were white, and I believe they were, does that mean that all white people came from Adam and Eve? What would distinguish the difference between two types of white people that may have came from Adam and Eve. Cain derived his white physical features from his mother Eve. This is what I believe. Now you can see the serpent race start to work its way around the earth. Friends, I don't have all the answers. And I'll never tell you I even have a lot of the answers because I don't. I can tell you what I do have. I have a, a bond and a love with my father in Jesus Christ, man. 
and I'll pray and I'll let the Spirit of God guide me. Pay attention to what I just said. What's going to guide me? The Spirit of God. Let's go further. Interracial breeding. There are those who will call me a racist for my beliefs on interracial marriage and interracial breeding. And let me share something with you that happened to me when I was a long time ago, when I was a, a younger man. I had two pure blood Rottweilers. I had papers. I had invested money in them. They were of good stock. In fact, the males line went back to, to Germany. They were pure blooded Rottweiler. All right. I knew a man who bought a black Labrador, a fine dog, and he bred it with another Rottweiler. He called them Rottadors and sold them for money. Yet the dogs were not pure blood Rottweiler, nor were they pure blood Rottador, nor, nor could they be. Now this did not make them bad animals, for I'm sure that some of those pups, maybe even all of them, went on to be fine dogs and great companions for a person or a family. I'm sure they were. Yet, they are not Rottweiler or Labrador any longer. People are not animals and we have something or lack something that makes us different from everything and everyone who does not have it. It's what makes you who you are. If there's really a seed of the devil on this earth, and we know there is, would it not make sense that our Father would tell us or even command us to stay with our own kind? But what makes us so different from other white people? Let's go deeper. Throughout history, there has been a lot of race mixing and interracial marriage. Yet God Almighty said in his word, his truth, and it was his command, you should stay with your own kind. He commanded it. I do not feel comfortable around Jews, Muslims, Buddhists, Hindu, atheists, blacks, browns, churchgoers, New Agers, Asians, and even white people. I'm white. Why would I feel uncomfortable and not trust other white people? I'll show you shortly, and I'm sure that you will understand. I do not feel comfortable around anyone but one particular people. The tiny group of people that walk this earth that are the same family as me. They are of God Almighty. Yet we are taught by our Father that we should live peaceably, as we, as much as we can around all men if possible. This means this this does not mean becoming friends with those that are contrary to God and Jesus. It means we try to avoid trouble, we try to be decent, we try to to live by what's called the golden rule of the words of Jesus Christ. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. But this does not mean that Jesus Christ wants us to go and buddy up and pal around with people that hate him. But yet, the churches and society will tell you this is exactly what you should do. And you know who a lot of those people are? They're white people. They got my hair color, my hair eyes, the color of my eyes, the color of my hair, my skin, just like you. In the history of white people, white men and white women have interbred and married outside of white races for a long time. It's ancient, folks. There are nations that have literally had their bloodlines and their identity changed forever because of it. Let me give you two examples. Spain and Portugal, 400 and 500 years ago, were both white nations. They look like you and me. They look like 1800s Tennessee. You understand? White. In the last couple hundred years, there's been so much interracial mixing that these nations have taken on a new identity. Now, there will be some who will say this is a good thing. If it's a good thing, why did God tell us not to do it? If it's a good thing, is it possible that it can even be wrong to marry or procreate with even people of your own race? That means if two white people, could it be wrong even to marry or procreate with somebody that's white? It surely can, but why? If we're to stay with our own kind, what did God mean by stay with your own kind? Did he mean just race or did he go deeper? Let's go deeper ourselves. In fact, let's keep going out to the, to the middle of the ocean. Most of you are white. Have you ever had a white person as your enemy? 
Have they ever tried to hurt you or take from you? Of course. You know they have, but who are they and why? Folks, all of us have done wrong. We've all sinned and we've all fallen short. And we said times we have been rotten people. All of us, man. Then the Father calls you to his truth, his truth and his ways. And you change. And once you change, you stay that way. You've been born again, man. Yet reality is this. Some people, white people, are born bad and they stay this way. I have a white enemy. I cannot call them hillbilly because hillbillies are my people. The term comes from the Scots and some Europeans who came to America and felt so out of place in the eastern cities and towns, they moved to the hills and the mountains of, of Appalachia. These are my people. I cannot call my white enemy redneck for I have some redneck in me. You know, my old Jeep is white, but my neck is red. The term redneck comes from the white Irish who worked the fields and around the necks would get burned. Therefore, they came to be called redneck. These are my people. What name would I use for white people that hate me and hate you and hate our Father and hate Jesus Christ? What name should they be called? I'm going to show you. You see, now these terms redneck and hillbilly are used by our enemy to describe white people who do not cater to the beliefs of this world. I have defended white people. I understand the pain. I know the masses have come against you for being white. However, I'm telling you, there's something bigger and deeper going on here. The devil has a seed on this earth, and many of his children look like you and I. They have our hair color, eyes, hair texture, our features. A few of you are going to understand some truth today about white people and those who are posing as white people. I'm going to show you a couple different types of white people. And in the end, you do with it what you want to do with it. One of the comments I used to see a lot from people on BitChute when I first joined is that we must preserve the white race. And this comes from the Hitler people and some of the other people. And I understand it, you know, to a point. When there's so many people against you, you feel like you should preserve the white race. But it's kind of like today we're going to the middle of the ocean deep and these people were frolicking in like the kiddie pool because they can't go further. They just to go further, you got to have something. And I'm going to show you what that is. And if you don't have that, you'll spend your life in the kiddie pool and you'll frolic, you know, you'll splash, but you're just going to stay in the kiddie pool. And that's where these people are. They would say that all white people are Israelites. They say the first white man was Adam. Well, Adam was white. I believe that. But were there other white people here before Adam? It's a huge question. I don't have the answer for you. I don't think any of us do. I tend to believe there were other white people here distinct from Adam. Because what made Adam and Eve different? I'm going to show you what made them different. I know the ancient Israelites were white. Abraham, he had a son named Isaac. Isaac had a son named Jacob. The father changed Jacob's name to Israel. And from these people came the Israelites. I'm an Israelite. Many of you are Israelites. But there's a couple different kind of Israelites. However, are all white folks really Israelites and of God? Hear me now, good people. Let me ask you something. And I ask you to refute the statement I'm going to make, if you can. I'll say it tactfully and truthfully. Right now, there are rapists, pedophiles, murderers, thieves, liars, and men and women who would come in your house and take your life and not blink, man. We've all seen people like this. There are people that abuse their children. They beat the hell out of their wives. They beat their animals. They torture. They do evil. They worship the devil. And guess what? A huge amount of them are white. They're white, man. You can't get away from it. So if the nonsense that you hear some of these Hitler people, some of these Christian identity people, that we're all one big white racial family, let me ask you, do you want to be to, would you like those people to be a part of your family? Do you think God Almighty, as he looks down and says, out of 100 white people, if 80 of them are pedophiles, 
rapists, murderers, thieves, liars, and are beaten and evil and cruel, do you think God says those 80 get a pass because they're white? There are fools that believe this, man. Let me say it again, folks. The devil has a seed on this earth. Many of his children look like you and I. They have our hair, eyes, and features. The goal of the devil from the very beginning to 2,000 years ago and even now was to mingle his seed with the seed of the one true father. In fact, the devil would try to infiltrate nations using people that look like the original Israelites. This was hard at times because of the obvious differences in physical appearances. However, when breeding with Israelites, which was forbidden by our father, they could change their appearance by slowly becoming and looking just like us. But there's something else missing. What's the other component? Now, as we get ready to learn some answers to what we've discussed here today, I want to say a word to you about knowledge and sacred knowledge and real knowledge. From the ancient days until now, people want answers to the answers to the mysteries of this life. From ancient scrolls, books, potions, and even folks who want to make deals with the devil, they want to learn the truth, is what they say. They'll do almost anything to learn the truth. People have sailed oceans, climbed mountains, and braved the deserts all in the quest of the elusive answers to this life. Who are we? Where do we come from? Why are we here? And is there a God? At no other time in the history of mankind that I know of has men and women been so desperate to have knowledge and so completely ignorant of who and what has the answers. What does God Almighty, our Father, and His Son Jesus have to say? For theirs is the only truth. Our Father gave His children explicit instructions to stay with your own kind. What kind? The skin color kind, or was it something else? God says that a demonic race is upon this earth. The seed of the serpent is real, even though liars and deniers try to downplay it. Genesis 3, 14, 15 proves all this, and throughout the scriptures we see these two families at war. Jesus speaks on this. He spoke on it. Let me show you something amazing, and you take time to read this with me. It's not long, but it's worth for us to read. The Son of God, the King of Kings, Jesus, was preaching by the seaside 2,000 years ago. And one of the most powerful truths you will ever hear about this world and who is who, because that's what it comes down to is who is who. Now, Jesus is preaching about the sower. However, he moves on and he takes his disciples, you and me, much deeper in the truth of who is of God and who is of the devil. So, no life jackets allowed. We're going a little bit further out into the middle of the ocean. We're going to drop anchor. And we're going to learn the truth. Now, friends, I'll turn your attention to the screen. And we read just a few verses from Matthew chapter 13. And I want you to pay attention. Because then we're going to ask ourselves, who's really who? First of all, as Jesus is preaching, he says this. And Matthew, and I'm not going to read the entire chapter, I'm just going to read certain verses, but I want you to understand what he says from the very beginning that he lets the people know, look, it's not for everybody. And the disciples came and said unto Jesus, why speakest thou unto them in parables? Jesus answered, verse 11, he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. So he tells them, listen, it's not for everybody. He tells them, it's not for everybody. Listen, this is not for everybody. You see, this truth that Jesus is talking about is not for everybody. You see, he's telling you right there that his words are not for everybody. His teachings are not for everybody. The mysteries of the kingdom of heaven is for the people that are his. Well, how do you know if you, are, if you belong to Jesus? 
Well, folks, let's stay in the same chapter here, chapter 13, and we're going to read the parable of the wheat and the tares. We're not going to read it all, but I want you to stay with me here now because this is important. Now, this is Jesus Christ telling you the truth of who's who. And then when you start to look around in the old world today, you'll start to understand who are these white people that hate you and me? Who are these white people that hate God? They hate Jesus Christ and say the Bible's corrupt. It's all a lie. And then Jesus' name isn't really, is it? what are they really called? Let me show you what Jesus Christ called them. Let me let, let me let the king of kings, let me say his words and he'll teach us what they really are. Matthew chapter 13, verses 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. The tares. You see, it might look like the wheat, but if you look closely, it has a tear in it. It has a tear in it. It doesn't look like it doesn't look like the wheat on closer inspection. What does that mean for us? Well, when you take two white people and put them side by side, and if you look closely, what is it that you can how do you distinguish the tear from the wheat? I'll show you in just a second. 27 So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, "Sir, did not thou sow good seed in, in the field? Then where then has it, where do these tares come from?" He said unto them, An enemy has done this. The servant said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, No. Lest you gather up the tares, you root up the, root, the wheat with them. You see, let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them but gather the wheat into my barn, into his house. You see, the tares get burned. The wheat gets, bat gets gathered into his barn. He's going to keep the wheat. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, and they want to know. Master, declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. They want to know this truth, man. You see, these men walked this earth. They knew there were people around them that were evil. They knew there were people that were evil. They knew the synagogue was Satan. They knew there were people posing as Israelites that weren't Israelites. Now, listen to what Jesus says in chapter, excuse me, in verse 37. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is, is, is the son of man. You see, that's the good seed, the son of man, Jesus. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. It's pretty powerful, man. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be. In the end of this world, the son of man shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who have ears to hear, let him hear. So after reading that, we see that there are people that are evil. They will look like you and me. They are called the tares in the wheat. And in the field, we see around us is filled with mostly tares. If you look at the world right now, you're looking at a lot of tares, man. So I asked you earlier, how do you distinguish between these people? How do you tell who's a tear? It's simple, good people. We learn from the fifth page of the Bible of the serpent seed, a race of evil that is spread over this earth. We learn from God's word and his spirit shows us these people. I have never said that our father can only love white people 
It's just not true. It's, it's a lie. Nobody can tell God who he can love, man. Nobody. If God wants to love anybody, it's God's to do. It's God's love, man. God can love anybody he chooses. Does God only love white people? Not hardly, man. There have been other people that God has called and said, you belong to me now. What did God give them? What did God give them? Yes, he gave us all Jesus, but what did he give us, man? What makes us different? What makes us different? First Timothy 4, 1 Timothy 4.1 says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, talking about the last days, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The Spirit says, not the flesh, that in the last days people will depart from the real faith and they will follow evil spirits that, sed that seduce and doctrines of devils. Let's go further, shall we? John 18, 13, we've talked about this before. Pontius Pilate is having this conversation with Jesus. And he says, Art thou a king then? And Jesus answers and says, Thou sayest I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. To hear the truth of Jesus, what, what do you have to have? What do you got to have, man? What do you, is it, is it your flesh? Is it your hair color? Your eye color? Maybe your skin? Huh? No. What is it? What do you got to have, man? Got to have a spirit of God. If you ain't got a spirit of God, you don't have nothing. You're null and void, man. John chapter 4, verses 23 and 24. But the hour cometh. These are the words of Jesus now. But the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Are, are you ready now? Now he just said, Jesus says, the true worshipers shall worship who? Jehovah Father in what? Spirit and in truth. And he, then he says, for the Father is even looking for those to worship him like that. In 24, Jesus says this, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Let's go further. John chapter 6, verses 63. The words of Jesus Christ. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Wow. Hold on now. So Jesus said, it is the spirit that quickeneth. This is what gives you life. This is what teaches you. This is what moves you. This is what guides you. The spirit. The flesh profits nothing. Nothing. Your flesh is going back to the earth, man. Romans 8.14 For as many... As are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. John 8, 47. He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. You see, the true Israelites today are easy to identify and distinguish. They are the lovers and followers of Jesus. And if God wants to call any other man or woman from the four corners of this earth to be his son or daughter, it's his business. And nobody dare tell God what he can and cannot do. But this is what some of these people do. The asylum inmates do not know the Father. You see, they are, they are in an institution of lies and, and BS. And they believe they know more than God, you see. They believe the Bible has been altered. 
it's got 10,000, 20,000 mistakes, and they got to have special teachers who, to, who can explain to them what this really means, what's that. They rewrite the Bible. This is why they don't use the name Jesus. They call him many names they learn on the internet from the synagogue of Satan. Sometimes they call him Christ, but they never use the name Jesus. Let me ask you something. Every man, woman, and nation and or group has something they hold as dear and worth preserving. Let me share with you what I hold first and foremost as dear, and you tell me if this resonates with you. If there is one thing worth preserving, defending, and promoting, it is the love, honor, and respect that are due to our Father and His Son, Jesus. You see, before my skin and my heritage, before all that, before the nation, before my brothers and sisters, there's the Father in Jesus, man. Jesus is your king. He is your family. We are not strangers to him. We are a family. You see, that's what's worth preserving. That's what's worth defending and talking about is what's due to your Father in Jesus, that family, your heavenly family, your spiritual family. Those who preach the truth are called radicals and dissenters. Brethren, this is what they called your king when he came to this earth being born of a woman. He told us to prepare to be hated by the same sadistic monsters for his namesake because we belong to him. For the truth is, the enemy has weapons, power, money, soldiers, followers, and technology that makes our most of our weapons look like mere sticks and stones. Yet you have a weapon more powerful than anything they could ever have. You have your Father in Jesus Christ. Man, you need nothing else today, tomorrow, or any other time. We're never alone. There has never been a moment in your life that your Father in Jesus did not know exactly where you were, what you were doing, and what you were going through. We've always been loved. Our Father loves us more than we understand. As we go forward, try to stay around people that are like-minded because they have the same spirit. Because they may look like you or may say some words that are similar to you, remember, if you really want to know who they are, man, you got to look at their spirit, what lives inside of them. Because what's inside of them, you will find out what kind of fruit they produce. Is it rotten or is it of God Almighty? And you may have to pray about it and ask Father, hey, who is this person? What is this person about? And you pray and you ask your Father, who is this person? Because we need to stay away from people that are not like us. Jesus gave us the command in Matthew 7, 6. Do not cast your pearls before swine, lest they turn and rend you. Men means lest they, they turn and gore you. Do not cast your, do not give that which is holy unto the dogs. You see, they may look like you, man. They may talk like you. They may say, hey, we're one big white racial family, but they don't have a spirit of God in them. If they ain't got a spirit of God in them, they're not your brother and sister. Take it any way that you like. Let's stop for today in Jesus' name. Let's give all the praise to the one true Father for this knowledge in the name of his beloved Son. I love you, Almighty Father. I love you, sweet Jesus. I'll see you good people soon. Praise the Father in Jesus' name. Seek his face. Seek his love. Seek, seek his protection. And do it all in the name of the name that the Father said is above every name. And that name is Jesus. That's who we are. This is who we are because we have a spirit of God in us. May the Father bless each and every one of you in the name that's above all names. His name is Jesus. Thank you for watching.